Welcome to Movies with McLean. I'm Andrew McLean, and this is my weekly movie podcast, and we're back today to talk political biopics. Here today are two of my favorite guests. First up, Griffin Burris. What's up, guys? And Matt Vorberger. How's it going? I think this will be a great show, and I'm looking forward to the discussion that we'll have. I just want to warn you guys, uh, if you saw last week's show about Nick Cage, uh, this episode's going to be a little different, more... uh, a little more political, educational, it might get intense, so just uh, prepare yourself. Uh, first up, our first segment is the Netflix Rundown, uh, and we're just going to talk about the movies that are coming to Netflix or have already come to Netflix so far in uh, December. So the three movies that we're talking about are, on December 1st, they added Beverly Hills Cop and The Rock, and coming on Christmas, it's the big one, Captain America Civil War. So, uh, which of these movies stands out to you guys? We might talk about all of them, but which one do you really want to talk about first? Um, well, I saw The Rock recently, because that was that added on recently. Uh, since And we, you mentioned it to me earlier, so I was just, like, really intrigued. Uh, there are really incredible performances from, like, Nick Cage and... Uh, Sean Connery. Yeah, Sean yeah. Connery. Mm-hmm. Um... Yeah, I just thought it was a really good movie, like classic action, really good. Yeah, I definitely agree. Um, I mean, of course, we talked about it last week, and so I said enough about that, but um, I guess now there's really no excuse not to watch it because it is available on Netflix, so I definitely recommend you watch it now. Griffin, have you seen The Rock? I have not. I have not seen it yet. I need to watch it. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I definitely think you should. Um, so, Beverly Hills Cop, have you guys seen that one? I have. I have, too. It was a little while ago, though. I love that movie. I think it's a classic. Yeah. It's like the classic cop duo movie. Mm-hmm. So um, I mean, I'm I'm definitely happy it got put on. Yeah. Uh, one day I like I just remember one day just like from a while ago just watching like all three in one day because I really liked them. But uh, yeah. I've only seen the first one. I haven't seen the other two. The other two are actually really good too. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't seen Beverly Hills Cop yet, but it's definitely mm-hmm. one of those classic '80s action movies mm-hmm. that I need to check out and now. It's just more accessible, so I'm excited to watch that. And the, then, uh, obviously, Captain America Civil War. Uh, we, we did a whole show on that. I think, Griffin, you were there for yeah. the spoiler review. Um, most people have seen it now, but this is just exciting that they're adding it. Uh, it's more accessible to people who don't have the Blu-ray. Um, so I'm happy for everyone who can watch it now. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm definitely excited for that movie. Yeah, it's definitely like one of my favorites of the year. And... I'm planning on getting the Blu-ray anyways, just for like the special features. That I think it was yeah. my favorite movie of the year, honestly. There wasn't that, in my opinion, I don't think there was that many great movies that came out this year besides like, I don't know, other than that, The Arrival, but Captain America was like up yeah. there for me. Well, I mean, it was a real disappointing summer in movies mm-hmm. oh, other yeah. than other yeah. than Civil War, but like, some... November has been like great. Yeah, it was, so, it's been great. Uh, the, the year's definitely picked up a bit. Um, Plus there was like huge letdown superhero movie wise with Batman vs Superman yeah. movie, so like that and Suicide Squad and Suicide yeah. Squad and the X-Men Apocalypse yeah and Apocalypse yeah. so that movie stood out pretty well yeah yeah so we can all agree uh, even if you've seen Civil War uh, it's now accessible you can watch it whenever you want so we're all excited about that and our next segment uh, we're bringing back is movie news this will be a continuing segment that we'll do every week now and our first uh, story you guessed it trailers so three trailers, uh, major trailers, have come out in the past week, and those are Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two, <clears throat> The Mummy, and Transformers: The Last Night. I believe this is the name of that movie. Mm-hmm. So which uh, trailer stands out to you guys? Definitely, definitely Guardians. Yeah, definitely <laughs> Guardians. Yeah, definitely Guardians. I saw like, <clears throat> I saw that response coming. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I I thought it was a great trailer. Um, they did reuse some of the scenes from the last trailer. Uh, I'm okay with that mm-hmm. because I don't want them to show us too much. Exactly. I don't want it to be a DC trailer. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Because, yeah. like, even the, like, scene where they're fighting, like, that giant monster that, like, Jack, like uh, Drax is jumping into or yeah. Gamora mm-hmm. is, like, stabbing, that's, I heard that's just in the beginning. So I think they haven't, they're just still holding on to, like, a bunch of this stuff, even though it looks like they're showing, uh, like, just, yeah. like, a fair amount. With uh, some of this stuff, I still feel like there's a crap ton of mystery that we're just not seeing or, like, 
that hasn't been revealed, yeah. which is really good. I'm really excited for the new soundtrack, too. Yeah. yeah. That, that movie had, like, such an iconic soundtrack. I mean, that's one of the main reasons why I love that movie. Mm-hmm. So I know for a fact, like, the second movie is going to have great music. Yeah. And even in the trailer, it still had, like, incredible music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that that soundtrack is probably my favorite in the past, like, five years. Yeah. I know after after I saw Guardians, I was listening to that soundtrack for, like, oh, months. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, I have no doubt that they will uh, deliver with we'll this soundtrack, up. too. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, and this trailer definitely showed that, because I think I like this trailer a little better because it had some of the new music. Mm-hmm. Um because the last one reused a uh, song from the first one. So, um, overall, I think it was a great trailer. Uh, those two scenes that they really focused on at the beginning of the trailer and the end, I think, were just hilarious with uh, Baby oh, Groot. Baby and then, Groot, yeah. And then with the, uh, where, where she revealed his feelings mm-hmm. uh, yeah, to Gamora. Yeah, that, mm-hmm. yeah, that was just hysterical. Yeah. So. Also, I heard for the soundtrack that David, or there was going to be another David Bowie song in there. Awesome. And James, yes. they had to cut the scene where it was in, but James Gunn is still going to try to put, like, oh, yeah. try to keep it they in. They have to. Just to, like, remember David Bowie. That's awesome. I know it's just David Bowie. Song. Don't remember. They, it, they didn't say. They just said David Bowie song. Oh, right. the new one they came out with. Mm. Yeah, yeah, that, I'm definitely looking forward to that. Okay, uh, any interest in talking about the Mummy or Transformers trailers? Other than the Transformers like being some of like the most hated movies of all time (laughs) i don't know i'm not really excited for transformers i used to like these movies but then i kind of like started watching really good movies and i'm like these movies are garbage yeah (laughs) so not really excited for that i mean the only reason i did watch this movie because of shia labeouf Uh, and now that he's not even in it it's just it's kind of pointless watching it they, um, they kind of always have, like, decent trailers, and then the movies suck. So, yeah. like, even if it is a good trailer, which I watched it once, I thought it was, like, okay. Uh, I don't think the movie will deliver on anything that the trailer shows. Yeah, I don't know. The Transformers trailer was just, like, a pretty much just a bunch of Michael Bayisms combined into, like, two minutes that didn't really tell anything about the story yeah. that much at all. Um, Plus, all, yeah. I, yeah, all Michael Bay movies are just the same. You got, like, explosions mm-hmm. everywhere, and just, I don't know. They're all, like, the same kind of explosions. It's yeah. not, like, changed up at all. It's, like, no. just, like, the same spark yeah, and, like, exactly. stuff like that. Not excited. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what about The Mummy? Any interest? The Mummy? I don't know. I feel like they're reinventing the whole, like, monster movies, like, to create a, like, universe almost like Marvel and DC are trying to do with, like, a bunch of different things. I don't know. I'm kind of intrigued because of Tom Cruise. Um, other than Russell Crowe. Yeah, Russell. Yeah. yeah, I saw Russell Crowe. I didn't know he was going to be in that. And also, what's the actress's name from Kingsman that's playing The Mummy? Oh, it's uh, Sophia Batella. Yeah, I think she uh, looks pretty intimidating as the mummy sometimes. Yeah. And, like, some of the scenes, uh, a little scary. Like, not, like, but, like, movie yeah. scary. Right? Yeah, yeah. Like, I'm a huge fan of, like, monster movies, but in this day and age, I don't know, it's it's hard to kind of, like, reinvent that mm-hmm. classic monster movie feel. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, you have to have a really good director to do that, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think this guy's, like, he was just a writer, so I don't even know yeah. if he's directed anything. I don't, I don't, yeah. I'll probably see it. I, I mean, I have high hopes because, like, mm-hmm. Tom Cruise, Russell Crowe. Yeah. Um, I, hopefully it'll be good. Uh, those, those 1999 and, like, 2000 Mummy movies were kind of cheesy, not great, but they're, they're like, a little enjoyable. Hopefully mm-hmm. this will be better, though. Yeah. I, I kind of want, like, a serious monster franchise. And it probably will be better than them. I mean, with Tom Cruise and Russell Crowe, yeah. like... Pretty good, like set of actors, but I'm not a fan of these movies anyway. But like, I'm sure this will be this this will be pretty good. So yeah, mm-hmm. the special effects look pretty good. Yeah, like her oh, eyes yeah. splitting did. into two each of them. That was pretty cool. Yeah, I that was that was really cool. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, our next piece of news is Aquaman, uh, directed by James Wan, has been moved from its release date of July 27th, 2018, to October 5th, 2018. So. A couple notes on that. Um, October 5th, 2018 was a untitled DC movie slot that they had uh, reserved. And uh, now Aquaman has been moved to there, so we don't know if they'll have another movie take that July 27th slot or not. Um, so what, is this got, what does this news mean uh, to you guys? It kind of frightens me because I was hoping for the October movie to be the Batman movie. Yeah which everyone is looking forward to. Everyone was kind of looking forward to it. And I thought they weren't revealing it to us because everyone just kind of knew. Yeah. And now that they're moving Aquaman to that slot, it makes me worried that either they're going to make it, they're going to put Batman in the July slot, or they might 
push back Flash, but if they don't, it's just, I feel like it's not going to be released for a while, and that wor worries me a lot. Yeah, I mean, I was really hoping they have Batman at that time, too, because, like, that's kind of a good, like, Halloween movie. Mm -hmm. um, you, like, you can have some scares in a Batman movie. Um, oh, I guess James Wan's a good horror director, but I don't think there will be a lot of horror in Aquaman. Maybe. Um, yeah, I mean, because, I mean, like, be. there's, like, a lot of the sea that's, like, not explored yet, and they're going to be just, like, I don't know. I'm just making up stuff. With get, D, yeah. Yeah. With DC, though, here's the thing. Like, they've... All the movies they've come out with so far, in my opinion, haven't been that great. Yeah. And they're, they're kind of, like, getting worse progressively. So, I feel like they should have put Batman in the October one just to, like, get a good movie in there. Because, I mean, I think the Batman's flawless. It's just, like... He wasn't written into that great of a movie. Yeah. But I think that Batman's awesome. So, like, if we had just a Batman movie, I don't know how they could mess it up. So, I think they need to, like, put that in there fast to kind of save their marketing. But I don't know what and, they're doing. And maybe that's what they're doing. Maybe yeah. they're going to move the put Flash it in July. to July and put, yeah. and put uh, Batman in March. Because the Flash obviously yeah. lost their director. That, that'll that slow things down. So, That'd be awesome. they are trying to get I that Batman so. movie out as soon as possible. Because... We have coming up Wonder Woman, which I think most people have high hopes for. The only worry I have is just Gal Gadot as an actress. Uh, she hasn't proven herself that yeah. much. Uh, oh, I mean, she was a, she was like acceptable in um, uh, Batman v Superman, but she hasn't like shown like any depth. Um, so I, I mean, I hope she does a good job, but I I'm not sure. And then Justice League, which I think a lot of people like the trailer, but I think they're kind of overcorrecting. Whereas. Um, they thought, like, the biggest issue uh, was that Batman v Superman was too dark. And that wasn't, like, the biggest issue. It was, like, story issues. Oh. But that's what some people complain about. And There's now so I feel like issues. they're making it too jokey. Yeah. So I, I'm also worried about Justice League. But, yeah, I, I totally agree. The Batman movie, I, I feel like, is going to be the first great because, DC yeah, movie. The Batman movie, in this or movie. the Batman, I guess, from Dawn of Justice was the only good thing about that movie and it was the only thing that like was kind of dark about it which some people complained about some people didn't but i feel like if it was just batman it'd be like a good dark movie so i mean that's that's what i'm excited about for sure if like ben affleck ben affleck can capture like kind of that scene where he's like kind of like nightcrawler like kind of like in the corner do oh, you yeah. remember that yes. scene where he's just kind of like yeah almost like a myth where he's just like i'm scared like shitless of this guy mm -hmm. i don't like know what he's gonna do if he can like capture that moment into like an entire movie of like him finding bad guys and him doing like it's what Batman, Batman does, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Then I think it'll be a really good movie. That's awesome. I definitely want to see what you just described. That sounds awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, we've had our uh, superhero talk. <laughs> now it's time to the to get to the uh, political talk. So uh, we're doing this because Jackie with uh, Natalie Portman is out about uh, Jackie Kennedy and uh, the aftermath of the JFK assassination. So, with that being said, the first movie that we're going to talk about is JFK, uh, directed by Oliver Stone. Uh, I believe this movie came out in 1991. stars Kevin Costner as uh, Jim Garrison. So, uh, Jim Garrison was the lawyer, um, who the New Orleans DA, uh, who investigated the JFK assassination and kind of uh, tried to reveal the conspiracy. Mm -hmm. um, and... It, Obviously, it's true, so if we talk about, like, what happened, it's not exactly spoilers. Uh, so we might talk about, like, a little bit of what happened. Um, so, basically, uh, I love this movie. I think that Oliver Stone, while he's a very controversial director, just makes you think so much when you're watching his movies. And I think that this is a movie that everyone should see, because, like, it does make you think... And uh, it just makes you question, like, what really happened on that day. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think one of the best scenes is when Kevin Costner meets with Donald Sutherland's character, who was, like, an ex-CIA guy. And he reveals all these, all these secrets to scene, uh, yeah. Kevin Costner. Yeah, um, Sutherland's talking for, like, 16 minutes. Mm -hmm. And you're just, like, so captivated the whole time. And uh, one of the things he says is everyone was so caught up with the question of, who fired the bullet that they didn't ask the important questions of why was Kennedy killed mm -hmm. and who had the power to cover it up and uh, who benefits. And those are really the big picture questions that uh, that reveal why there might have been people in the CIA involved, the FBI, the mafia, the military industrial complex. It, I mean... You can go on for hours. Yeah, there, there's so many uh, people who could have been involved. And after watching this, like I definitely think that 
there were multiple shooters and there was like a conspiracy uh, involved with the higher levels of government. You might think I'm crazy, but if you watch this movie, you might change your mind because they'll they'll really do a good a good job convincing you of that. Yeah. I don't know if you've uh, if you've watched the '60s documentary directed by Tom Hanks. I've they, not. They actually they dove like that scene you were describing. They kind of dove into that a little more, and it's like honestly like mind boggling of just everything you can think of about who was involved and why when it comes to JFK assassinations. I mean, I can go all day talking about it, but like, like you said, I like how the movie was more progressive because when it comes to like a JFK movie, it obviously has to be. So if it was written by more of a non-liberal yeah. <laughs> director, I mean, it probably wouldn't have went the same way, but I'm glad that it was because for a JFK movie to be like that, I think that's what it, it had to be in. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I mean, I definitely agree that it's good that it was from that perspective, even, even though that's not, like, my political views. Like, I think it works in the movie um, because, like, uh, Jim Garrison at one point says, like, I've never been, like, more disgusted to be mm-hmm. an American, and, like, y- you've got to agree with that. Like, like uh, they pretty much, the motives that Donald Sutherland's character describes is that the people in the military-industrial complex wanted Kennedy dead because he was going to end the Vietnam War. And they made so much money out of that, yeah. and I mean, you can't, you can't like argue with that, like how terrible that is. So, I mean, yeah, even as a conservative, like I'm, I'm glad that it was Oliver Stone who made, who made that movie. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't get to check this one out, but I'm really intrigued, and I'm definitely gonna check it out probably within the next week, based on just like how much you guys have said you've liked it, and how much it's like impact your mindset on like whatever like the movie, like most of the movies about, and like yeah. the conspiracy theories and stuff like that. Um, yeah, and, oh, sorry, I just no, no, a good. couple more things, uh, I think, like, when you watch a movie like this, you have to do, like, a little bit of research afterwards to see, mm-hmm. like, how much of it's actually true, and for the most part, like, this is a very accurate movie, um, as far as, like, the facts presented in court and, uh, the investigation done by Kevin Costner, obviously they, they play out some of the scenes of how it could happen, so we don't know which of those are true, but, uh, for the exception of with the exception of a couple scenes that don't really have that big of an impact, uh, most of the facts are uh, facts, and it's full of great performances. Not just Kevin Costner, but Tommy Lee Jones, who's the man he uh, prosecutes, um, and Joe Pesci also. I think those two guys give great performances. He did great. Yeah, he was great. So I mean, this is definitely a movie that I think everyone needs to watch if you haven't. Uh, of the ones we talked to, talk about today, I I recommend this one the highest. All right, we can move on if we're all done. Yeah. All right. Did you want to get on to your one? Uh, uh, the King Speech or W? I was going to say W. Uh, sure. Well, W is also directed by Oliver Stone, and I think it was, like, a really good, like, movie. Like, it wasn't great, but, like, I feel like the story didn't really need to be told. It wasn't, like, a, like, hot button, like, like, it needed to be a movie, but I thought it was really well directed by Oliver Stone, and with incredible performances. I feel like that's always a constant with biopics, that the actors in it do really got a good job portraying, like, whoever they're playing. Like, uh, George W. Bush played by Josh Brolin, Laura Bush played by Elizabeth Banks, uh, H. W. Bush played by James Cromwell. And, oh, I was going to say Dan Carvey. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then uh, Ri- uh, Richard Dreyfuss plays uh, Dick Cheney in a really good performance. Okay. Um, overall... It just like kind of st- like starts off the movie with him as president, and it flashes back to like him in a fraternity at Yale, and just like almost like like him pr- pledging for fraternity. So they're kind of like um, going through the, like what it, like the steps for them to become yeah. part of the fraternity. So not the best experiences, but uh, and then it kind of flashes back and forth between his presidency and then moving along to the point where he runs for president and stuff like that. Also, like with these weird cut scenes where he's like on a baseball field alone with a glove and uh I don't know it was weird it was a little those scenes were a little weird but overall I think it was really well directed with like really good camera work um also yeah yeah and then I'll go into like what it's like talked about and like what it meant uh like in like hidden meanings somewhat kind of but not really <clears throat> yeah. oh right now or you want, uh, you want did you, you guys, what did you guys did you, were you guys intrigued by the movie at all yeah I mean I definitely am uh I I haven't seen it yet, uh, but Josh Brolin, I think, uh, has become one of the better actors working uh, right now, and uh, like you said, anytime there's a biopic, uh, it's almost like 
these actors take these roles uh, in hopes of winning an Oscar. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, that's definitely a performance I want to see. And uh, I think it's kind of crazy he made this movie while George W. Bush was still in office. Mm -hmm. So that's a little risky. But, yeah, um, and, yeah, it was intriguing. Yeah, <laughs> that, that is intriguing, yeah. Um, I guess that's all I can say because I haven't seen it. What about you, Griffin? I haven't seen the movie either, but I've heard, that it, I've heard good things about it, mm -hmm. and I'm definitely excited to see it. Yeah, okay, so when... I go into, like, dealing with, uh, it deals with kind of, like, him being a child born with a silver spoon, silver spoon in his mouth, because essentially his dad, like, doesn't really appreciate him, and he likes Jeb Bush more, like, okay. he's his favorite son, like, obviously, yeah. and, um, also deals with some alcoholism that George W. Bush dealt with before his presidency, and, like, getting off that before he ran for governor of Texas. And then also reflecting on your mistakes, especially after his presidency, that's kind of where the film ended, where he was asked by a reporter, like, what are your biggest mistakes in life, or like, in, not in life, in your presidency, and like, how would you have, like, changed them? And he's kind of flustered, and he doesn't really know how to answer the question. Yeah. And I feel like that sums up, like, mm -hmm. George Bush's president, like, I feel like that sums up the movie and, like, his portrayal perfectly. Yeah, I mean, like... Yeah, even as a conservative, we, we can all agree he had some mistakes, but yeah. um, I think some people, like, give him more, uh, like, kind of bash on him more than he deserves a little bit, mm -hmm. but yeah, it's definitely a movie I, I want to see. Um, I want to see kind of how, well, what, what Oliver Stone's opinion of him was, because yeah. I think you probably can definitely see that in there. Yeah, like you said, uh, it's, he is a, con not a, con he's a liberal director, like, he's very liberal, but it didn't almost, it didn't seem one-sided as a movie. You could definitely tell that there was part of, partially there, but, like, it didn't seem like it was bashing on George Bush the whole time, because there was definitely sympathy for him as a character at most points in the movie, because he's the protagonist. He's obviously going to have problems, because that's pretty much, there wouldn't be an interesting film without yeah. there being problems. But, yeah, that's essentially it. <clears throat> All right, well, uh, we ready to move on? Yeah. yeah. Go on to right. King's speech. I'll get into the King's speech. First thing I'll say about this movie is, I thought it was really well done, because when someone, like before the movie came out, if someone would have mentioned the story to you, it honestly could have been a sentence, how he delivered a speech that captivated his people about wartime, and that's, that's really what it was, but they dove into this movie piece by piece, and I, like it was really descriptive, which I really enjoyed, I mean that's why I won its award, and I really enjoyed the acting in the movie, because like I said, anyone can just, like, tell the story, but I thought that the actors, like, Jeffrey Rush, even in the movie, was oh, yeah. incredible. Yeah. I thought, right. like, yeah. he was phenomenal in the movie. Uh, I know that Gambin was in the movie. If you don't know him, he's Dumbledore from Harry yeah, Potter. Yeah, he was, yeah. I, I recognize him. even with the short, I think he had, like, a five-minute total runtime in the movie, but he was a great actor. And it had a two-hour runtime, I believe, and I, just, I still can't believe that they fit, like... Mm. That, yeah, like they fit all that in a lot into two hours, and I honestly wanted more because every like moment of that movie, I was just locked into the screen, and it gave a lot of information that I did not know. Like I, I never knew the story in general, but like everything that he was going through with like his brother. I mean, you watched the oh, movie, yeah. right? Yeah. He, his brother, if you guys don't know, was having an affair and caused obviously caused problems since he's the king of the church. So. It basically dove into problems with the king at that time, and I thought it was a great movie. What do you guys think? Yeah, Guy Pierce did a really good job playing like kind of a douchey brother, yeah, older I was, brother. Yeah, I, I was gonna say he's just yeah. the ultimate douchebag. Yeah. Seems like he plays that role a lot. But mm -hmm. yeah, keep going. Uh, yeah, and essentially, I thought it like took a kind of a boring present premise pre uh, premise mm -hmm. and turned it into like one of the best films of 2010, yeah. and I just really was really captivated by it. Yeah, they definitely keep you interested, uh, like, even with, like, the speech therapy sessions, like, you're yeah. still, like, real, they make those so interesting and, like, great, like, cinematography and great performances just keep you into the movie. All the lighting three of, was really good, too. What's that? The lighting was really good. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. All three of the uh, performances were nominated for Oscars, like, mm -hmm. the main performances. And, uh, yeah, I think uh, it's kind of sad, like, at the beginning because you see him go to, like, give a speech and you just know, like, like, obviously, if you know what the movie is, you know that there's going to be, like, issues, and uh, obviously he has this stammering problem. Um, I think uh, even though 
he can kind of be like a jerk sometimes, calling for uh, King George. Um, like, you kind of understand that because uh, as growing up in the royal family, like you said with yeah. George Bush, she's got the silver spoon in his mouth. Yeah. Uh, so you can understand that. Um, but it's really a good story to see how he connects with Jeffrey Rush's character and how they grow in their relationship throughout the movie. And um, and then to see that uh, at the end it says Jeffrey Rush, uh, who play, his character was like Lionel, uh, was with um, King George at all of the speeches that he gave for the rest mm -hmm. of his life. So I thought that was really special to see that, um, that that relationship continued. And yeah, I just think it was a really good story. I enjoyed how like the first speech he gave in the beginning of the movie, like it almost was like making me sweat because I was like nervous for him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like that acting was just really well done. And I also liked the, the, his brother, the scene where he made fun of his stammer, that, that scene was like perfect for his role. Oh yeah. yeah. That just like destroys you when you're like, oh, oh my, my God, like how, like yeah. that's his brother. He's like so awful to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I think that you could like truly like their friendship portrayed between Jeffrey Rush and Colin Firth's characters were just really well played and you could, like just felt like they were really good friends like especially at the end when they're talking right before he's about to give mm -hmm. that famous speech I think it was really well portrayed I don't think I found any flaws in the movie really yeah they were really I'm pretty really. picky I didn't I didn't find almost like any and I know the movie was true to its story a lot I, I looked up on it it's, mm -hmm. it's pretty accurate yeah yeah, and uh, uh, what's his name? Wormtail from Harry Potter is like he plays Winston Churchill in there. I noticed you know? that. Uh, yeah, yeah. I was, I was surprised to see that. I mean, he's it's a small role. He's not in it much. I just thought I'd bring that up. Anything else on King's Speech? No, that's it. All right. Uh, I'll bring up my next one, Lincoln. Uh, so Daniel Day Lewis in this movie gives one of the greatest performances I've ever seen. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, obviously that's what you expect from Daniel Day Lewis. Yeah, exactly. Um, but you're not even watching Daniel Day-Lewis in here, you're watching Abraham Lincoln. Because, like, you forget that that's, like, an actor, because he's, like, so much like Lincoln in his mannerisms and everything. Um, I mean, obviously, uh, There Will Be Blood is another great performance, but I think I think Lincoln might be a better performance. I don't know, they're, they're up there as two of the greatest performances of our time. And uh, it's just really a great story about... Uh, what I would consider to be the, the best president that we've ever had and how Agreed. he wouldn't give up on um, passing the amendment because it, it's about like passing the 13th amendment as the war was ending and he really pushed to get it passed bef or ratified before um, the war was over because everyone, even while they hated slavery, there, were a lot of, there was a lot of racism at the time and he feared that if the war was over, people might vote against the amendment to abolish slavery because they didn't want blacks um, to join society, really. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think it, it was really great uh, how they showed all the politics of it. Uh, it's funny that we kind of talk about this election as, like, one of the, like, nastier elections with, like, all the insults that were thrown around. But if you see the scene in the, um, like, in the House of Representatives with... Mm -hmm. uh, like Tommy Lee Jones and some of the Democratic senators just mm -hmm. yelling insults at each, each other. other. <laughs> yeah, it's just tr trash talk. So I don't know how accurate that is, but it seems like a lot of that still went on back then. Um, so that was really interesting to see. And Tommy Lee Jones, also another good performance. He's got a real bad wig, but um, he takes it off at one point. So like you see that it is a wig, so that makes you forgive it a little bit. Um, but yeah, what do you guys think of Lincoln? Um, I think it was just like... There was overall, I don't, it's not really too complex to me. I think it was just like a plain spoken, down to earth, just really good movie, it, it, like with really good performances. Um, that's pretty much it, yeah. I really like, obviously, like you said, uh, the acting in the movie, because beforehand I watched the movie, I didn't really like know too much about Lincoln. Yeah. But while watching it, I just like, like you said, I felt like I was watching like Abraham Lincoln, like just his, how he talked, everything, like how he acted in public like it was crazy i really enjoyed it yeah um obviously it's got the john williams score which enhances any spielberg mm -hmm. movie i forgot to mention too jfk has a john williams score that it's that's an incredible score uh if you don't if you don't remember um and yeah i just i love the scenes like in the house of representatives and it's crazy that they make the scene where they like do the vote where they like take the votes they make that scene interesting where there's like hundreds of people yeah. just 
saying yay or nay, like, Steven Spielberg makes that scene interesting enough that you can sit through that for, like, five minutes. So, I mean, he's one of the best directors working today, and I think if there was another director who tried to make a movie like this, it could have gotten a little boring. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I think it's I think it's an incredible movie. It kept me interested. I liked it. Yeah. I mean, it feels like, okay, it's two and a half hours, and it does feel like it's two and a half hours, um, but, like, some some movies like this might make you just want them to be over, and this definitely keeps you interested. Also, another thing I'll say about JFK while we're on the discussion of length, that's a three-hour and nine-minute movie, but it flies by because you're just so captivated the whole mm -hmm. time. Sorry, I went off track. I just remembered I forgot to say that. Anything else on Lincoln? No. Probably so. Yeah. All right. Uh, who wants to go next? I'll go. Go ahead. So, All the Way... Yep. Uh, I know you two have not seen this. No. It stars Brian Cranston as Lyndon B. Johnson. It was an HBO movie. And I really enjoyed the movie because, I mean, there's not that much about Lyndon B. Johnson, cinematography-wise, film-wise, that's out. And it's new, which I really enjoyed. But the thing about this movie is it captivates how Johnson was kind of thrown into his presidency. Like, I'm kind of bouncing off JFK here because it was right after the assassination. He was thrown in. And he honestly wasn't for some of the things JFK was for. Yeah. As a president, he wasn't very uh, progressive. He really didn't care what got changed civil rights-wise. He was kind of forced onto that movement. And they really captivated that into the movie, how he wasn't the person like he's really described to be. Like He's kind of a nasty, a, a little bit racist president. And that's not what like some people may think of him since he's a part of the Democratic Party, but the movie just was really descriptive in how he was kind of careless to his party and to his administration. He was just scandalous, like, he didn't really have appreciation for his wife at all, he didn't really treat women that well, and it shows how him and Martin Luther King had to come to some, like, pretty nasty compromises in the movie to, okay. like, get stuff done. It was intense. Yeah, I, I'm seeing now that Anthony Mackie played Martin Luther King yeah. Jr. I didn't know that. He did really well in the movie. Oh, yeah, I expect that. Yeah, he's he's done some great work recently. Um, Brian Cranston, I think, already kind of looks like uh, Lyndon yeah. Johnson. Yeah, so he played it well. Yeah, I I expect that. Um, I Oh, well, actually, I forget. Were you going to say No, I mean, that? I don't know a whole lot about Lyndon B. Johnson other than the fact that he was, like, the president right after the JFK assassination. But And I'm really intrigued to learn more about, like, how he was as a president, so I'm probably gonna check it out really soon too. I I think I remember something from JFK where uh, John F. Kennedy signed like some presidential act, like 263 or something, that was gonna end the Vietnam War in like 1965, and then Johnson like signed something that like counteracted that to like keep the yep. war going. Johnson was known as like the Vietnam president. Yeah, and that's what he was kind of like stamped with, which made things harder for him. But honestly, he was just. He wasn't that great of a guy, in my opinion. <laughs> really? Yeah. You think the movie had like some bias to, against him, or? Um, no, not not really, but I guess in some instances maybe, but like that's just how he was, honestly. And then there's times that's how a lot of people were, cause like civil rights movement back then that was like revolutionary. Yeah. So like the fact that he did that was already insane, but like I just think it's interesting how he didn't want anything to do with it at all, and like he's from the South, so he was kind of raised with a little bit of, like, racism in his family, and it just shows how, like, corrupt politics can be, which is why I really enjoyed the movie. Yeah. I, I mean, I definitely want to see it. I hadn't even heard of it until you brought it up, but mm -hmm. I'm glad that you did bring bring it up. Um, is that all you had on it? Uh, I also enjoyed the cinematography. It kind of gave, like, an eerie feel to it. it there was always, like, a um, like a hand cam. Okay. Like, behind him. Yeah. As he walked towards, like, his to do his speeches or... If he was making an announcement, which kind of gave like a really eerie feel to the movie, which I really enjoyed. Okay, cool. All right, Matt, what's your last one? Um, I'm gonna be talking about Gandhi, and I think it's like one of the like it's an incredibly famous film. It comes across incredibly sincere. It's like about one of the most admirable men of like his generation. Like, I saw it a couple years ago, so it's not like clear in my memory. But there are definitely some scenes that stand out. Like, I just remember him being, like, beaten up by the cops, and he won't fight back, and stuff like that. Or the scene of his funeral, uh, where 
it's just like a massive amount of people and a massive celebration for like this man's life. Um, he get Ben Kingsley gives an incredible performance as Gandhi. He like transforms into him. When you look at him, you're just like, wait, that's Ben Kingsley because he looks exactly like Gandhi in like old pictures. Um, that's pretty much most of what I have. But like, it's just like an old fashioned epic that pretty like it's three hours long and it's like just like practically no flaws and it doesn't it kind of feels like three it feels like two and a half but that doesn't really say much because two and a half hours is still pretty long but it's just a a massive story told and compressed and two even if, like three hours is still a short amount of time compared to like everything that happens mm -hmm. in the movie like going throughout his entire life yeah the span of that movie was mm -hmm. incredible it started out when he was yeah. very young yeah. to his death which i really enjoyed yeah i haven't seen it i definitely need to um Obviously, uh, you say it's a historical epic. I love those historical epics. Uh, I, I like sitting down and watching a movie for three hours, mm -hmm. so uh, it'll be no problem. Um, and I definitely want to watch it because I know I've, I've heard all about Ben Kingsley's performance, so there's not much else I can say. Um, well, I mean, I saw it, like, freshman year, and it was, like, staggered into, like, a week or two of, like, Same. just, yeah. like, what, yeah, just watching it within those gaps. That's the so, worst. Yeah, I feel like I just want to, now, like, I want to rewatch it just, like, all in one sitting, just so I can, like, receive all of it as one movie rather than, like, five or six different parts of a movie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's no way to watch a movie. I yeah. know. We were watching Castaway, and, uh, like, a couple weeks ago. We watched like half of it before break, and then the the other half after break. Oh, yeah, it's terrible! Mm -hmm. Yeah. Another thing about the movie, though, um, do you recall the scene when he was fasting? Yes, I do. Yeah, that was probably like my favorite part of the movie. I thought mm -hmm. his acting was really well done. Yeah. And it shows just like what Gandhi went through to mm -hmm. get his point across for civil rights, which I really enjoyed. Yeah, I just like whenever he's conversating with someone. Like, uh, I'm pretty sure. Uh, Martin Sheen is in it, and he just like his conversation. Those conversations between them two were just really captivating for me. I think they both did really good jobs performing as their characters. Mm -hmm. All right, well, uh, is that all? Yeah, that's everything. That's all we had for uh, our main discussion of political biopics. Uh, one question: See if you guys know this. Um, Oliver Stone. We talked about JFK and W. Do you know what other president he made a movie about? Was it Reagan? It's actually Nixon. Oh, oh wow. Dang it. Anthony was, Hopkins I played Nixon. That. Dang it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, good guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's pretty, Reagan's, yeah, his was pretty bad. They should make a Reagan movie. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's all we have. Uh, next week, uh, come back and watch us. We're talking about Christmas movies. I know that seems a little early for Christmas movies, but the following week we have the Rogue One review, and then we're taking a week or two off after that. For, uh, for Christmas and New Year's. So, uh, thank you for joining us today. Um, I guess YouTube is now, like, making people get, like, likes and comments and subs on their videos for their videos to, like, pop up. So, uh, I guess, uh, ask not what the podcast can do for you, but ask what you can do for the podcast and, uh, give us those likes or else I'll have to fire my staff. That would be the worst. Um, <laughs> So yeah, thanks to everyone for watching. Uh, I think this was an excellent show, and thank you so much to Griffin and Matt. I had a great time. No yeah, thank you for thank having you. me. Thank you. Yeah, well, I'll have you guys back uh, soon enough. Awesome. And that's all we have. So uh, have a good week. We'll be back.